All right, I want you to take a look at this website animation right here. You're probably thinking this was created with Greensock Animation Platform with WebGL like 3JS, but you would be mistaken. This is actually created fully, everything you see here in Figma, in Figma alone. Now this was created by Or Halevi. I probably butchered your name, very sorry about that. But I'm featuring five different prototypes that this designer has created because they are so impressive. The animations and interactions are things that I thought you couldn't do in Figma. Now what's also really cool is each one of these prototypes are available from, for you to download within the Figma community so that you can see exactly what he's doing to create these really cool effects. We'll take a look at a couple of those as well. So as always, make sure to subscribe. Let's get started with the first one. If you enjoyed this video, check out designcourse.com where you can learn UI, UX, CSS, and more with my custom interactive platform that makes learning fun and easy. Okay, so let's check out this one. This is a different one for the first one. We'll come back to the first one, uh, the, Larry, the very last one, and we'll take a look at it again. Uh, but this one, all we have to do is just click open in Figma and it will replicate it as a project in your own, basically, Figma account. And let's check this one out. This one's really cool. I, if I hit play, you'll see that we have, if I hover over this, we see this kind of weird blob that's kind of, it's like a mask effect. And you could do this sort of thing with WebGL and 3JS, uh, realized in the browser. Um, if I click on it, it expands, and then it kind of just goes back and forth between the two images. This is really cool. How do you uh, do this sort of mask effect within 3JS, like how do you get that animation? Well, what's really cool is if you look at this particular uh, project file and we open this up in the uh, layer settings, you'll see that we have something called animated blob and it's actually a movie. So you can see it's a little movie graphic and that movie graphic, if we come over here and hit play, it's an animated GIF and it's just a green little blob. However, when you take an animated GIF with a transparent background and you make it a mask, then it creates a mask effect that animates with the GIF itself. Now that is really awesome. So let's check out another one. Uh, we'll go here to this full screen gallery. This is, number. we'll call this number two. Now this right here in and of itself is pretty cool because we can just drag this around. But when you click them, check out this animation. Oh, that is so sleek. Slide to explore. So the first one was drag. We'll click it and it'll just toggle before, between both of these states. Oh, that is so nice and satisfying, especially with the, the, uh, the type-based uh, mask animations. Very, very nice. Again, if you go back to what this might look like, it's only just four, literally four different artboards. And if you take a look at the prototyping tab, you could see the connections between all these and you could really start to figure these out uh, in terms of how they were created. We're not gonna go into depth in this particular video. I uh, perhaps will, I'll do one as well with my, my own takes on these types of animations. Just let me know in the comments if you want me to do that. Here's another one, Sydney Opera House. We're gonna hit play. A lot of really cool sequence-based uh, elaborate animations. I mean, that right there in and of itself was, was really impressive. We click explore, click go back home. So this is a nice transition that just happens between basically two different frames. It would be cool if this was then draggable. Oh, okay, there we go. I didn't see, I didn't notice that they were clickable. Oh, it's so nice. So you can really create some elaborate prototypes and interactions if you try hard enough within Figma. And I know some of you might be wondering, why would you do that? Well, because if you're a designer, you have a very specific criteria for which you want your UI to be animated. You wanna show developers that first because developers aren't necessarily animators. They could just handle the code integration. So let's take a look at another one here. This one is really cool. Just a very, this is more of a simple uh, demo. But if we click on this, we can see we can kind of like toggle between three different photographs. And it's just a nice 
very nice smooth animation. That custom easing is what really gives that animation such a nice smooth flow essentially. Okay, let's go ahead back to the first one that I featured at the beginning of the video, which is right here. Uh, it is really the most impressive one in my opinion. Uh, well, let me make sure by the way I fit the screen. So again, we click this. How would you create those really cool, interesting lighting effects and also the warping? I mean, that is so cool. Check this out. I'm going to play this a few times just so we can see this. And it's like, how would you do that? Oh, so nice. All right. So let's go ahead and look at what's happening here. Literally just two artboards, or two frames in this entire document. <clears throat> so this is the beginning. It's starting out right here. And we can see if we expand both of these, everything's basically replicated here. We just have a lot of different transitions and things animating in and out of the scene in order to make this work. So the box right here, you can see we have what's called a light and shadow. If I actually drag this in, you could see what it does to the background. So when I select this, you could see the fill is just a white and black gradient. All right, it's a linear gradient with a bunch of different color stops. And then right here, we can see it is set to soft light for the layer, which gives it this nice effect. Otherwise, if we change this to normal, uh, you basically, it would look stupid. Uh, let, me, let me come out of the see, that's what that would look like. So you wanna change that to something like soft light, like, like that person had originally. Let me just go back and not mess with that stuff. All right, so he has four of these that kind of just go in at the same time. They're, they're all going across, so it creates like a flashing effect. Then you have the image itself, which is rotated. And then you have a box, and this is a layer mask, as you can see up here. And you can see these shapes right here, these little wave effects. These are, of course, all masks. So if I take this intersect uh, object, look at this and look at the bottom here. Notice how it's adding to the image because this image has been intentionally kind of cropped so that it gives it enough room to create this wave effect as these animate from this position over here all the way to this position. Let me go ahead and get this out. Way over there, see them? And so that's what's happening. If you look at the prototype tab on click, Navigate to Smart Animate, 2800 milliseconds. That's 2.8 seconds. That's a long animation, but for such an intense sort of animation, uh, where you're clicking on an image and you have all these things happening, it's nice and smooth, not too fast, not too long. Uh, and then, of course, you go back and you just revert back to those changes. And that's essentially how you create these really complex animations. I'll go in depth and create one my own if you want me to, and we'll come up with a, a unique project. But I just really wanted to feature uh, something another designer has done that is awesome, especially because this person made these community uh, files available within the Figma community. So definitely check out Or's LinkedIn, and I'm gonna link the website here in the description of the video. As always, make sure to subscribe and I'll see you very soon. Goodbye.